Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very short but very interesting case presentation. What we have here is a hemorrhagic bleb on the drum, which is just a blood-filled sac or a hematoma, bruise, whatever you want to call it. But uh, essentially what's happened is this patient has jabbed a cotton bud down onto the drum, acute pain, and uh, capillaries have ruptured, and, and now we have blood pooling in the tissues. And it just so happens that it's, instead of sort of, you know, bruises all over the shop, it's just formed this perfect orb, basically, on the drum. And so uh, I'm calling it a hemorrhagic bleb, but you can call it a hematoma as well. Um, so heme is, just means blood, and uh, oma, anything with oma on the end, typically refers to a mass. So this is a mass of blood, I suppose. Um, but that's what a bruise is. So it's, it, it, it's blood that is escaping out of the vessels and into the tissues and is not supposed to be there. So what do we do with this patient? Um, you know, normally when we see hematoma, even if it is on the drum, we don't tend to worry that much. Um, so obviously, you know, most of the time patients do it to themselves, just like this chap. Um, but sometimes on the very odd occasion, we do it. And it's not intentional, obviously, but um, those audiologists out there that fit phonak lyric hearing aids, you'll know what I mean. So, uh, and phonak lyric hearing aids are, are sort of semi-implantable hearing aids that we put down near the eardrum. And sometimes if they get wet, um, then they become very difficult to remove. And sometimes, you know, we do cause a little bit of hematoma when we remove these hearing aids. Um, and we have seen hematoma on, on the drum. It's not usually an issue. However, in this particular case, this guy is, it is free, he is freaking out. Um, this hemorrhagic bleb is causing you know, a very weird and uncomfortable feeling in his ear, like a feeling of fullness. Um, it's making his hearing quite poor on this side. Now he had an underlying hearing loss anyway, but the bleb is making it much worse. And uh, the tinnitus in this ear has, is going crazy. Um, probably because of the bleb, but probably also because he's freaking out so much. Um, I did show it to him on first examination. I usually ex examine patients with a camera. That's Valsalva there. Um, I usually examine patients with a with a camera so that we can both see what's what's happening inside the ear. Possibly shouldn't have shown it to him, but in, in any case, um, be, even though I wasn't particularly worried per se, because he's freaking out this much, I did send him through to my friend Anavan, who's an ENT doctor, and Anavan basically lanced it and then happy days. Most of the patient's symptoms went away pretty much immediately. Um, I saw him again, you know, about a week later and everything was fine. It looked great, no perforation there. Um, so I was relatively happy with the outcome. So uh, now what would have happened if we had left it? Well, probably it would have, would have taken a while to go away actually. It may have taken, you know, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks for it to kind of totally look normal again, maybe. Um, so what would have happened is it would have started to change colour. So instead of red, it would have started to look kind of darker and darker, maybe sort of, you know, purplish, dark purple or maybe blue. Um, and then it would have gone to maybe a yellow colour and then a brown as it's kind of shrunk down. Um, and what's happening is that your body is, you know, breaking that, those blood vessels, uh, sorry, uh, red blood cells down. Um, so essentially when you, when you have a bruise, okay, which is kind of what this is, it just happens to look weird and it's in the wrong place, but basically a hematoma is a bruise. It's, it's blood that's collecting in the tissue. It's, it's, it's escaped out of your blood vessels. And when it starts, when the in initial injury is there, it looks red, doesn't it? Um, but then as the, the bruise gets older, it's about sort of, you know, 12 hours old, that blood deoxygenates and then it looks darker. Uh, and then as your macrophages invade the tissue, macrophages are white blood cells, they'll start to break down uh, those red blood cells and um, break down the, the haemoglobin. Um, and that's what gives it that, um, that's what makes it change colour. So sometimes you'll see that as the bruise is getting older, it, it takes on kind of a yellowy colour. Um, and that's because as the haemoglobin is broken down, it's um, broken down into bilirubin. Um, which is incidentally what makes your pee yellow because uh, you're peeing out all the bilirubin as your red blood cells are being broken down, uh, which is a natural process. 
And um, obviously, if somebody's jaundiced, then they have um, hyperbilirubinemia. So emia means presence in blood. So you have too much bilirubin in your blood. But uh, it, would, it would have probably gone away. Um, but again, because it's in the worst position possible and the guy was in extreme distress, um, I sent him through to Anavan. So there we go. I'm just tidying up this ear, but there's not a huge amount wrong with this ear. But um, again, I thought just to, to calm him down, I would clear out all the debris and then I guess make him feel like I had done something and he could not panic about this particular ear. But you can see the eardrum in the background. Um, it's that lovely kind of bluish gray color. And uh, we'll just tidy this up with uh, a Cawthorn hook, which again is a fantastic tool. Any audiologists out there are wanting to work with a micro hook, Cawthorn number six is absolutely the best. Um, so uh, is the patient feeling any better now? Yes, he's feeling much better but the tinnitus still bothers him quite profusely. Um, now, the, the, I don't think the long-term tinnitus was anything to do with the bleb. He has it in the other ear as well. Um, but uh, I think the tinnitus is being caused by the underlying hearing loss that he had anyway. Lovely looking eardrum, handle of malleus. It's kind of that lovely bluish gray, shiny loveliness all the way around. Certainly no bleb like what you see here. Um, I would note that other than the bleb, the rest of the ear looks relatively happy. There's no obvious inflammation. It's not kind of, there's no pus, exudate. Um, so everything looks relatively good, actually. There we go. There's another Valsalva maneuver. And um, I guess really what I'm doing here is just kind of checking to see if there's any kind of perforation lurking elsewhere, but there isn't. So there we go. There is a hemorrhagic bleb on the eardrum. Hope you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.